Good evening. We've had some wonderful testimony here tonight from some wonderful people. And of course, these citizens of Somerville Kingdom have expressed themselves so deeply of what their thoughts are. And we, I heard one of the uh, citizens testify that there were seven uh, defunct board members. Actually, I'll say there's four misguided board members. We don't blame anybody. But we try to reason. But gentlemen, I was in business for 35 years. And I understand and I've seen this. And any time I was asked to sit on a board, I said, well, what kind of director and officer's insurance do you have? What exclusions are there? Because I had some vast capital that I did not want to see grass. I wanted to make sure I was covered. I spent two days talking to a very strong law firm in Fort Worth. That law firm is Williams, Lacey, McClure, Parmley Law Firm. Now, Ray has a good lawyer, but they gave me some insight that just scared the Jesus out of me to be thinking that I would want to be on this board. Can't hear you, Bob. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. What I'm going to discuss just briefly with these gentlemen is the danger they're putting themselves into. I believe the, the board members have some deep thoughts, which that's fine. They've been admonished for not setting this up correctly. If they wanted to fire away tonight, it's going to be legally incorrect, which leaves them openly liable. My hour visit with some of the insurance companies I talked to Traveler, and I talked to Chubb. Philadelphia Insurance is another carrier of directors and officers insurance. In my discussion with Chubb, which handles the insurance, and I'm going to speak only in facts, not emotion here tonight, <coughs> and have you gentlemen give deep thought to this. If the insurance company, Chubb, finds that the dismissal is actually a case of retaliation against Mr. Reynolds, and evidently it is, it violates, of course, Section 1983 because of his testimony they have the ability under the exclusions of wrongful termination to cease coverage for that particular case and circumstance. Now, this board willfully went out and said they were going to get themselves elected and have made so many public statements saying that they wanted to fire away Reynolds giving no cause except to eat this hospital out from the inside and destroy it from the inside. Also, should Mr. Reynolds prevail in his suit against the directors in the court, will demand that the directors pay his legal fees as well as their own. Yeah. It does not take evidence to get to that point. After reviewing the Chubb policy in place, it is very evident, and from talking to the lady who was sharp as a pack, gave me all the ins and outs, and said that we immediately, and it's in that policy, I haven't read that policy, that we will not cover those directors should Mr. Reynolds decide to pursue those directors, and they will have to pay their own legal fees and have to pay his legal fees should they lose. Okay, because this comes under... Thank I'll, you. I would like to wait my two minutes, said the gentleman. Okay. The Chubb policy woman who gave me this information. Her name is Leslie Deacher. You can call her. I will have her phone number for you. Because this would come under Title 42, Section 1983, sometimes known as the Whistleblowers, defense, Mr. Reynolds' case could be submitted to state and federal court at the same time, and then it would be rolled up into federal court. All right. There, I investigated the assets of some of these board members. Some of these board members have in land and assets over a million and a half dollars worth of assets. Some of these, I have all the records, and I can give it to your lawyer, 
and give you there is substantial amount of money to be had should they wrongfully dismiss you, which under the laws. in the thousands of dollars to help you pursue litigation against the story yeah. that should they receive it. Yeah. And we have a commitment from this law firm that says most likely they will do it on a contingency basis. Yeah. Thank you.